Welcome to my interview with Mike Morton at Direction Samir 2022. Hey, I'm Eric, and um, I guess I'm, I'm future Eric compared to the Eric you're going to see just in just a minute because this video is a interview that I recorded with Mike Morton from Microsoft, the uh, the head of Business Central um, at Direction uh, EMEA 2022 in Hamburg. Um, and um, he agreed to sit down and have a chat with me, which was, I think was pretty cool. And um, this is it. So uh, sit back and, and enjoy. And um, I think actually before, just before we hit go on, uh, on that piece, I want to thank you because you're a subscriber to the channel and the only reason that I was able to get Microsoft to do this was because there are so many of you subscribing to the channel. So if you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing because it enables videos like this. And, and I think I think this is pretty cool. So uh, sit back, sit back, sit back, relax, and uh, let's, uh, let's see what Mike has to say. Hey all, now I have managed through hard work and perseverance to uh, actually get hold of Mike Morton from Microsoft, the, the head of Business Central, the, the number one guy uh, in, in, in this. And uh, yeah, Mike, tell us who, who you are, who are you? Yeah, I'm, I'm again, Mike Morton. Uh, my technical title, I guess, is the Vice President of SMB for Business Applications. Um, really, that is effectively the head of uh, Business Central. Um, but that does involve uh, also some of our older legacy products like SL and GP, um, as well as uh, going forward, how do we bring things like Power Platform, sales, customer service, and be more successful in the SMB segment. But ha hang on, hang on. You're the first VP that 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 business central has that's had. correct yes right. um, and so I think the you know uh, obviously it's, it's a nice sort of honor for myself but more significantly uh, you know really thanks to probably all the people listening uh, into this um, it's a sign of the success of where we've gotten uh, with business central you know Microsoft has uh, maybe a fair number of VPs is a big company um, but there's typically a, a scope that says hey in order to have kind of a VP for a certain sort of product area it needs to be a business of a certain size. Um, and you know, with the growth that we've seen uh, over the last couple of years, um, uh, it's fantastic to see and uh, you know, a real sort of sign of Microsoft's commitment and uh, bet on Business Central. So what you're saying is that, that you getting the VP title is shared with the rest of us. So oh, I... absolutely. <laughs> absolutely, cool. it's not That's because cool. of my work alone, it's because of the success of the product, yes. <laughs> so one thing I do know about Microsoft yep. uh, is that whenever a product group get a new boss. Yep. You, know, you know, within the first three months, there's a reorg. But as far as I have heard and seen and observed, that has not been the case when you came aboard uh, to Business Central. Uh, that's more or less true. So, so I have, you know, in my, it's almost three years now or um, two and a half years, you know, have not done, done a massive reorg. You know, I, um, I came into a good situation, but there have been some changes. You know, I think the uh, an incredibly strong team that we already had. Um, I think uh, a very good sort of mission and direction. Uh, it was, you know, there's a lot of history with Business Central and NAVs and sort of zigs and zags. Uh, but I think that we were on um, a very good path, even if, if maybe kind of relatively early on some of the sort of switches and, and really made the decision that said, you know, hey, you know, when you have a reorg, one of the big advantages of a reorg is it it helps you essentially reset the strategy, get people thinking sort of in different directions. And I really wanted to see us sort of execute on this plan. Let's you know, make cloud a reality. Let's address the top issues. Um, let's really uh, you know, figure out how we can expand sort of the existing vision of sort of Business Central. Um, now, if you get a little bit more detail, there actually have been quite a few work changes, and I, I don't want to get into all the mechanics. Um, oh, no, no, but, but you know, so, so again, when I say reorg, I, I, I mean something that is drastic enough that you know, it that's reaches right. me. That's right, that's uh, right. And, and so I think the, you know, the fundamental vision and direction, and, and frankly, I think that's important uh, for the ecosystem and community. I think the, um, you know, there is a risk sometimes that, as you said, when you have new leadership, people have new ideas, and you know, having products zig and zag too much in terms of what their core focus on, uh, you know, can be a real danger. 
Um, it can also be a real danger to stay the same too long. You have to, you know, yeah. go and so and so the, um, uh, you know, certainly for me, I, I've you know formed some strong opinions about what we need to do differently and where we need to invest more and, and sort of invest less. Um, but I think the foundation uh, is sort of quite solid. And I think the, uh, you know, there were a lot of places in terms of uh, how we actually executed. And so you talk about that sort of big strategy, uh, but then just kind of going into the more tactical parts about, you know, everything from engineering efficiency to working with our partners to pricing and licensing, you know, to actually, uh, you know, making sure that we had the right, you know, support mechanisms and the right ability to respond to sort of issues. Uh, you know, uh, there's a lot of, uh, you know, it's like sports analogy. Sometimes it's a big game plan, but it's also often, you know, people actually executing on their, their roles. So you came from somewhere else in Microsoft. Yes. Um, so my, my career has, has almost entirely been in sort of the Uber office organization. Uh, I worked on uh, SharePoint for about 10 years. I was the, one of the original founders of SharePoint. And so I worked on that from really the conception uh, to being a pretty big product. Um, and then I worked in the office organization, uh, specifically uh, bringing Office to the cloud, um, Office 365. And so that included the web-based versions of Office, like Word, Excel, and PowerPoint on the web, um, as well as a lot of the services that power Office. And so a very simple example is co-authoring. You know, we have a big service in the back end that supports all that co-authoring um, that was built by my team and, um, and, uh, uh, and really sort of bringing Office from sort of a traditionally, you know, siloed desktop product to sort of this collaborative uh, web-based solution. So, do you think your your previous Microsoft experience has ha, has helped bringing Business Central even closer together with these core yes, products? Yes, absolutely. And so, I, I think there were a couple things from my background that made this uh, a really good fit. Um, one of them is just the connections with the products, being able to help the team. Uh, you know, traditionally, Dynamics hasn't had as deep of a relationship with. Uh, other groups on Microsoft, you know, like Office, like Teams, like Azure, um, and just having, uh, you know, a lot of experience in Office, you know, we work with everybody, um, and it's, uh, um, uh, you know, kind of going back and forth there. Uh, I think also, uh, you know, Office has a very uh, high bar in terms of the customer experience, in terms of uh, usability, in terms of how uh, we kind of go about the product, and to me, that's a, a big thing that I want to bring to Dynamics. You know, I, I think that we don't want to be viewed as a thing that you have to go and read a long manual before you can start using. We want to think about those uh, sort of principles about you know having it be a product that people actually enjoy to use, delightful, easy to learn. And, and you know I know there's a lot of sophistication. I'm not trying to say ERP is is not complicated, uh, but I think that our sort of viewpoint uh, going there. Now, I think you're touch touching upon something central because we all know that ERP is. Tremendously complicated, of course, yeah. but it's complicated in a very different way than Word is complicated. That's right. Uh, yeah. And and so so what is what is your impression of of how I, I know that that Dynamics has been way more accepted into the general Microsoft uh, world, uh, but does does the rest of Microsoft now know that hey? This is actually a pretty sophisticated and complicated things. Or uh, is how much is Dynamics still sitting on the side? Well, the, there are a couple of parts of that. You know, I think if you, you know, in Microsoft, if you're somebody that like worked on, uh, you know, compilers for years, you're like apps; those are simple. And if you're somebody that worked on, you know, Word for years, you're like, oh, compilers are simple, and apps are complicated. And so there's always a little bit of, you know, and so Microsoft tries to do some of this cross pollination, so people just sort of understand the sort of the different products. Um, but I think the, uh, there's been a pretty significant change in sort of understanding the importance of business apps to the broader Microsoft strategy. You know, the, the, I'll say the really broad spread things we have, things like, you know, Windows um, and Office, you know, they continue to be amazing businesses, but there's so much value uh, in terms of their customer and their workday and what they actually get from their business apps and their, and so we need to, if Microsoft only you know, we stopped like only at these sort of very, very horizontal tools. We risk having other companies come in and take a lot of that sort of value chain from the customer. And, and ultimately we believe that, you know, we're gonna be able to sort of best serve the customer by uh, really kind of taking it across that whole lens. And so they, you know, maybe their highest value thing is their business processes, but the fact that they can do so with great productivity tools, with great devices, um, you know, with great solutions connectivity, um, is what really positions us in a, in a great spot, uh, really actually across all the businesses, um, but particularly across sort of competitors in uh, ERP and, and business apps. So in, and, and, and 
I, I'm making an assumption here that in comparison, the, the BC team, your, your team is relatively small uh, compared to other product, product teams around uh, Microsoft. Is that because this one is, is a small team or the other ones are two big teams? <laughs> uh, so, um, you know, product team size is, is really interesting. You know, the, the, the BC team is, is it's, a, it's not the largest team, it's not the smallest team. We, you know, we have a decent number of engineers. What, what makes BC, um, what makes the team size seem challenging is that BC is, you know, the application experience, the platform, the deployment, the management. We have our own language and compiler and developer tools. Um, and so just the pure, you know, the pure sort of depth and complexity of sort of the product is sort of BC. Um, what you'll see in other organizations, you know, e even Office, like the number of people that work on Word, or also say like the Word team, you might be surprised being relatively small, but then there's, you know, huge amounts of people that might work on, you know, shared code for even things like, you know, you know, spelling and grammar mm -hmm. or layout or toolbars or menus or et cetera. Um, and of course, we leverage a lot of shared things in, in BC, but maybe um, in a less kind of direct way that, that I sort of described in, in sort of office. Um, and and I, I do think your point about um, the BC team being lean um, and efficient is true. Uh, there are, uh, one of the really great things about the, the Business Central team is uh, we are very efficient in our decision making. Um, there are other parts of the company that, that are sort of great, but you often have to have a lot of coordination to sort of make things. And, and you know, we have you know, a nice combination of um, autonomy to make the decisions that we want to, and just frankly, incredibly talented engineers that are you know, just very productive and, and world-class at what they do. Now, we, we had a discussion earlier today at the conference uh, whether you, know, you, you have a compiler team, you have a, a, a dev team, uh, and, and there are other... No, there are other compiler teams, but plenty of uh, compiler teams within uh, in the whole Microsoft yeah. world. But it's again the sizes of team. This seems to be a very small team compared to how much impact they actually yeah. have. Yeah, <laughs> um, that's um, yeah. You know, and that's a combination of things. I mean, it's part just kudos to some amazing engineers able to accomplish what they've done. Also, you know, really, I mean, there's a lot of. Um, uh, a lot of opportunities to leverage both, you know, shared code, both within Microsoft and open source, um, as well as sort of shared knowledge. And so we really, uh, you know, that that leanness, um, you know, prevents you from from trying to always reinvent the wheel um, and really trying to be uh, intelligent about what we do. Uh, and, and so it's a it's a it's a combination of things. And it, you know, and you kind of got you know you asked me sort of the question about the org. I mean, you know, there, I want some of the people working on our compiler stuff staying there. We have some very talented people. You do. Um, and, you know, shifting around too much, uh, you know, is, uh, you know, run some risk. And so I really want to make sure that just our own talent management within the team is, is efficient. So with, with that in mind, uh, for the last many years, uh, the there's been a lot of focus on making this uh, a world-class platform, a world-class service, uh, move to cloud and all that stuff. And, and during that period, let's, let's say that the, the application might not have received all the love that it yep. should have had. Uh, so how do, you, how do you look upon this going into the future? Yeah, um, so I, I fully agree. And so you know, I, I accept the, the, the promise of that question. And I think that well, I know that, um, you know, we're going to invest more in the app. And so, uh, again, not going into like details of my organization, uh, but I will say we have made some changes where we've uh, shifted some folks around to really ensure that we have uh, great people uh, working in the app space. We already had plenty of great people, but putting more great people sort of in the app space. And I'll kind of uh, list sort of three initiatives in that space that I'm really trying to prioritize across the team. Uh, the first one uh, is in the app space, but I'll say in the app architecture. You know, we have a lot of events, a lot of extensibility in the product, uh, but we want to make sure that we have a great modularized architecture that goes for the long run. And there's a little bit of risk that if we go down our current path, you know, we could have a on before, you know, line 675 and on after line 6775. You do have that. <laughs> um, yeah. And if we, you know, we keep doing that, you know, ad infinitum, uh, you know, we're going to have a very hard time in the long run, you know, up making updates from us, having updates from, from partners. And so the, you know, really thinking about how can we better modularize and really build, you know, upon the extension model that we have. Um, I don't want to scare people. We're not going to come up with some entirely new uh, extension interface sort of overnight, but we have actually some pretty good ideas on how we can take the system that we have, evolve that, and over time really make that 
uh, much more robust. So that's kind of the first part. Um, the second part is how do we enable more customization uh, without writing code in the first place? And so these core scenarios, like I want to add a field to a view, or I want to create a new field all up. I want to change how this is sorted or grouped by. Uh, you know, these, these scenarios should be doable um, by an end user, or in many cases, it will be a partner. Uh, and, and I'm just going to stop you there, because yeah. all my viewers know that one of my apps is the object designer that does exactly that. But uh, so kudos for for mentioning this. Um, and and people should be using. I mean, I want to I want to compliment you. Know, that's a sign that you, Eric, and others, <laughs> you know, have recognized this gap. Yeah. Um, and you know, and we recognize there's challenges that sometimes that um, you know things that are built by by ISVs or others are, are also going to. But the you know that's um, a huge part of the thing. How, how do we you know reduce the need? Um, in many cases, you know, you know, have a thing that can be done by consultants and not to hire a professional developer. Um, and the, the last part, I'll say the third, and this is, is kind of um, almost silly to say, but make the app great. <laughs> um, and you know, the you know, we have places, you know, we've gone and, and taken a lot of ideas that we've had and made little tweaks here and, and tweaks there. Um, but we we know that the delta between, you know, we think we have a great app right now, at least relative to the competition. But but compared to what it could be, you know, we we think that the experience. Um, and just going through module by module, um, you know, and that's not necessarily existing modules, it could be new things as well. Um, and really thinking about, you know, uh, what's right for the next year, two years, five years, ten years down the line. And, you know, I think that's maybe the most core part of your original question, hmm. actually investing in the app itself, investing, you know, in the, you know, the core logic of, of what we build, the core experience that we go down there. Um, and, and I think that the reason why I gave you the really long answer is that those things are kind of all connected. I think that, um, you know, we need to have that right fundamental architecture. Um, we need to have the right balance about what's sort of done, you know, by Microsoft versus, you know, partners versus sort of customers. Um, and then we need to make sort of the right out of the box investments. So the very last question here is, uh, so there's a lot of people watching this, young people, and, and I think there are, there are, you know, lots of them also thinking, hey, this sounds really cool. How can I be part of that? Uh, yes. <laughs> um, there are a bunch of ways to be part of it. Um, you know, certainly, you know, uh, being part of the partner ecosystem and, and particularly building things that are, uh, you know, reusable and so building great, you know, horizontal or vertical solutions. Um, open source, you know, we, uh, we are actually open sourcing uh, quite a bit of our app. We had the, um, uh, a bunch of announcements that we've made. Um, and so uh, if you're particularly ambitious, um, you can actually contribute uh, to the core business central. And so that's certainly a way. Um, you know, it's interesting, I think for, you said younger people, you know, for some older people that start questioning the heads, like why would I do that or spend my time or what's the, um, but the, uh, the model can be very valuable. I think contributing to open source is a great way to get um, your reputation built up. In many cases, you might be building capabilities that are going to be somewhat commoditized anyway. And so that's a, a great way for you to sort of contribute. Um, you know, so there's times that we're hiring at Microsoft that can be, you know, rare, but go ahead. No, 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 <laughs> but so, so in case, if you are hiring, would you go look at people? So this person has has done some open source contribution that really looks cool. Is that is, is that a good thing to put on your CV? Uh, it, it, it's a fantastic thing, um, and and frankly, you know, there's there's even other avenues from Microsoft. You know, we we have been known from time to time to make IP acquisitions, um, and so that's a way to you know either you know benefiting from the acquisition or it's nice you know, we buy the company and coming part of sort of Microsoft. Um, it's certainly a fantastic thing to have on your um, on your CV, you know, I think the, uh, you know, the, you know, these days, you know, your GitHub contributions might be more important than what you put on your, you know, that might be your CV, <laughs> um, and for for a lot of folks, um, and that's a, a you know a really great way to to both directly contribute um, and then also to you know potentially grow your career. Excellent. Thanks for uh, taking the time from your very yeah, thank you. uh, very I mean, busy I know, schedule, and uh, this has been wonderful. Thank you. Yeah, you know, I know we haven't had. Uh, much chance to meet uh, in person, but I, I hear a ton about your work. I watch your YouTube stuff. I follow. I, I see your, your critical comments as well, which we love. So keep giving the feedback and keep being a great, uh, great partner. I will. Thanks. Thank you. So again, um, just going to repeat the, 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 the past, uh, Eric, uh, at the interview saying thanks to Mike and thanks to Microsoft for enabling this and, uh, Thanks to you for being a subscriber and, and, and watching this. And uh, after all this talk, if you want to go back to some uh, actual AL programming, you know where to find it. This one is especially selected for you. So check it out. I'll see you there. Take care. Bye.